So what do we have over here? Write all other trig trigonometric ratios in terms of sine A. I'm going to begin with the easiest one. I'm going to write sine A in terms of sine A. Oh, they meant all other trigonometric ratios. Okay, but I start here. And then I, okay, maybe I'll go to cos. So cos of A in terms of sine A. Now, maybe I can do this, right? Cos of A equals sine of 90 minus A. Yeah, I'm done. Or am I? What's that? This is not really in terms of sine A. This is in terms of some other angle called sine of 90 minus A. If A had been, I don't know, 30 degrees, then uh, this will be sine of 60 degrees. But if it's some weird angle, like, I don't know, if you know sine 40, that doesn't mean you know sine 50, which is sine of 90 minus A. So this is not actually what we want. Um, even though this looks short, we want to write it in terms of sine A, not some other angle. And this is exactly why they told me I should memorize... Um, trigonometric identities. So which trigonometric identity connects cos A and sin A? The world famous one, right? Which one is that? It's cos square A plus sin square A sin square A equals 1. Now that's the identity that connects these two. Now see that here we have cos square A which means I can find cos square A in terms of sin square A and then I can find cos A. Let's do that. So I'm going to subtract sine square A from both sides. So I have cos square A on this side, cos square A on this side, and that's equal to 1 minus sine square A, subtracting sine square A on both the sides. And now, then what is cos A? Cos A is going to be, that's right, cos A is just root over, root over 1 minus sine square A, 1 minus sine square A. And you can be happy here or you can ask me, hey, wait a minute. If cos square A is equal to 1 minus sine square A, then isn't cos A also possibly negative? So shouldn't I put a plus or minus sign out over here? In other words, if I don't know this cos square A is, I don't know, 4, then cos A could be 2, but it could also be minus 2. So there is a plus or minus sign over here and you will be correct. But given we are in class 10, in class 10, cos A is basically, if you have a triangle like this, a right angle triangle, if this angle is A, then cos A is basically this length by this length, right? And this length is a positive number. This length is a positive number. So this length by this length will also be a positive number. So, but why did I say in class 10, this is cos theta or cos A? Does what we does what, what we mean by cos A change when we grow up? It kind of does. What we're dealing with in class 10 is what, what, what I like to call the demo version of trigonometry, where cos A is this uh, ratio of this side by this side of a triangle, which means it will always be positive, because this will be positive and this will be positive. But later, when the full version unlocks of trigonometry, you will know that cos A can also take negative values. But as of now, you don't have to worry about it, because it's a ratio of lengths, it is a positive value. But later, cos, sine, tan, all of them can take negative values because the way you think about them will be different. So let's update what cos of A is. Cos of A is root over 1 minus sine square A. Root over 1 minus sine square A. You'll probably use this a lot. Now let's go to tan A. Tan A. Because once I have cos and tan and I already have sine, it's easy for me to find the reciprocals because the other three are just reciprocals of these. Now, I've already used uh, this one here. I don't need this anymore. So let's, let's get, rid of this, get rid of this to make some space. Bye-bye. So tan of A. So I know already an identity that connects tan and sine and that's tan A equals sine A by cos A. That itself is an identity. And I know that. I already have a sine A here. I have to now find cos A in terms of sine A, but I already did that hard work, so I can just use it. So if I use that, then I'll get equals sine of A by root over 1 minus sine square A, sine square A. And that's it. I'm done because the other three, let's draw a nice line over here. The other three, that's not a nice line, a nice line over here. The other three are just reciprocals. So the easiest of this is actually cosecant A, cosecant A, because that's just equal to 1 by sine A, 
1 by sine a, then we have secant a, which is just 1 by cos a, and I can just write 1 by this now, because I already did that hard work, root of 1 minus sine square a, and the same story over here for tan a. The reciprocal of tan a is uh, cot of a, and that's going to be equal to the reciprocal of this, which is root over 1 minus sine square a divided by sine a. So notice that whenever you have to find other trigonometric ratios, you probably have to find 2. And that's it, because the others will be reciprocals. Even though it seems like you have to find 5 other ratios, you only have to find 2. 